And welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our new mini set, So Jelly, its coordinating dies, and the Ocean Wave border dies too. So here I am stamping out the jellyfish from So Jelly, and I just love him, he's so cute. And then here is his starfish buddy. We've got some great bubbles for setting the scene, the You're a Star sentiment, and then the I'm So Jelly sentiment, which I think is just too funny. And so now I'm going to use some Copic markers to add some color to this great jellyfish here. And I decided I kind of wanted to kind of create darker areas on the bottom left and the top right. What I love about the jellyfish, I feel like you can color them any color that you want. You can get so creative with them, shade it however you want, and just kind of play around with it, which I really like. So there I'm adding a little bit of darker and blending that out. And I actually never ended up using that V17. It was just way too dark. I wanted the jellyfish to be a little bit lighter so it was almost kind of translucent looking. And uh, so I'm just blending that just a little bit more. And then now I can add some nice little pale blue to the tentacles there. I think those are called tentacles. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's what they are. But anyways, I think it looks so cute with those two colors. And now I'm going to color the starfish. Now I'm starting with these oranges and kind of blending them out, but it ended up being way too orange. So what I decided to do to tone down the orangeness of it all is take a really light brown marker here, I think it's called Baby Skin Pink, and just layer it over. And it just kind of dulled that bright orange out. Now I'm just filling in those little dots with a white gel pen just to make them pop. I went ahead and stamped out two more jellyfish, and I'm going to go ahead and start coloring those. And I'm actually recreating a card by Elena. I fell in love with her So Jelly card when I saw it, and I asked her if I could recreate it for this video, and she said yes. So thank you so much, Elena. I'm so excited to be creating this cute card. So here you'll see on this jellyfish, I decided to do the shading a little bit differently. It's darker at the bottom and then on the right side. And I was having trouble blending my colors, so you'll see that I'm touching my lighter marker to my darker marker to help me blend those two colors. It kind of creates a medium shade and just helps the blending between those edges. So you'll see I kind of had to work at this one pretty hard to get the blending to finally work. So I brought in one more color, a kind of paler color to help me blend out, and that seemed to help create a better look. So, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to blend these colors. And then now I've got some cute little yellow tentacles. And then I'll do some more coloring now in the same style as I did the first one with the bottom left and top right kind of shading. Uh, and I'm just blending those out. And these really pale blues are so pretty. I think it really gives a cool jellyfish kind of look. And then I'll just add a little bit of that darker marker and then blend it out into that lighter marker. And now I'm gonna to touch the light marker to the dark marker to create that kind of medium shade because these two colors are far apart but I don't have the marker in between them. So this is a way to fake it and kind of make it work with what I've got. <laughs> so there I'm just touching it to the tip again and just blending it out just a little bit more. Then I'll go ahead and color his little tentacles. And then now I'm back on the starfish. I got obsessed with the starfish. I just wasn't liking the blending. So I'm touching the lighter marker here to the darker marker to create this medium shade to just add a little more pizzazz to him. And now I'm just adding some little rosy cheeks to these jellyfish. And uh, on the pink one, I'm kind of actually taking a little bit of color away with a lighter marker just to kind of give the illusion of little cheeks. And now I'm adding these little dots using the darkest marker of my blending in each jellyfish. And this is an Elena technique that I just love when she does this. It adds so much fun texture, and it's really fun to do too, doing all these little dots. You just kind of bounce the pen around uh, your little image, and it really does add some really fun texture. Just finishing up my little pink one. And then now I'm using a white gel pen to add to the little rosy cheeks. And then now, of course, my starfish needs rosy cheeks. Kind of switch to a little bit of a darker one. And then I'll add some more white gel pen marks there. Now here I have my coordinating dies. So I'll go ahead and just bend them at those little tabs to separate them. And I've got my ocean wave borders ready to go too. And then I can go ahead and line the die up with my stamped image. And I like to hold them in place with some post-it note tape so that I can run it through my die cut machine. 
and get these great little die cuts. I always love seeing them come out of the die. It just looks so cute. So here are my three jellyfish and my little starfish all done. And now we can go ahead and check out the ocean wave borders. So I wanted to show you the three different sizes of the ocean wave borders. I love that there's three sizes. One, because depending on what scene you have, you may want to have smaller or larger waves, but they're actually also really fun to layer on top of each other too. So here's a look at those three sizes of waves. And now here you can see how you can take the three sizes and layer them and can create some really cool effects actually. So uh, you can see that it really gives that choppy wave look, especially if you used different shades of cardstock. I think that would be really, really cool. So I love the look of layering them or using them separately depending on what works for your project. Now one other cool thing about this die set is the negative of the die set. So you'll see here the other side when you cut them, you get this really funky scallop, which I love. I think it would look really, really cool on cards. I've taken out my Aberti Told Me set because I love these word bubbles. I'm going to go ahead and stamp out these two word bubbles and just color them in really simply with some really light markers. So I use the RV00 there and then the blue one is the BG10. And because I need to fit this long sentiment into the shorter word bubble, I'm using some post-it note tape to mask off part of my stamp. That way ink only gets on the your part of the stamp. And then I'll clean that off really well and switch that post-it note tape to the other side. Ink it up again, remove the tape. Remember to remove the tape. Sometimes I forget and then it's this whole mess. Anyways, um, then I can stamp it out. And now you get a different look from the same stamp, which I love. So here I'm just finishing coloring this little bubble with the BG10 marker. And now I can do the same idea with the I'm So Jelly. Now, the parentheses is so close to the I'm that I did have to just wipe that off with a little towel. So I used the post-it note tape to kind of mask off, you can see there, the I'm so part. Then I inked up the whole jelly and parentheses and then just wiped off the parentheses with a little rag. And then I was able to stamp it like a stacked sentiment. Now I can use the Aberti Told Me dies and get my two sentiments here all die cut. And now all of my pieces are ready to go so I can start assembling my card. Now I've got the brand new stitched ovals. I love these so much. And I'm going to go ahead and create a frame with these. So I've used some post-it note tape again to help hold it in place. And I'm going to layer these two dies together. And they just kind of nest and fit right inside each other. Then I can run it through my die cut machine. And I'll get a frame and another oval which I can save for a different project but I love the look of that frame. And then now here I have three shades of blue cardstock and I'm using the large wave die, but I'm moving it in different places on the cardstock. So I either did it centered or to the left or to the right. That way the waves look different on each piece. Now I'm gonna use that smaller sized oval in the middle of a stitch rectangle piece that I cut to cut the window. And now you'll see that this frame is going to fit perfectly around that opening since we use that same small oval die to create the center. And now I can begin to layer these waves. I'm kind of testing to see how I like it. And I cut another stitch rectangle of the same size to be my base here. And that way I can just layer these pieces on top and then that frame will fit perfectly over it. So I'm just gluing those down just with some normal adhesive. And then now I'll be ready to add a ton of foam adhesive. I ran out of big foam, so I've just got these little teeny tinies, but I added those on there. And now that dimension looks really cool with the window idea. And then I just glued down my little frame. Now I'm placing all of my elements and then adding them on also with foam adhesive, just because I just love foam adhesive. I love the popped up effect. And then that last I'm so jelly, I'll just use some tape runner for that guy. And now I'm using a white gel pen just to add some fun little marks, just like Elena did. So little kind of movement marks, which makes the jellyfish and starfish look like they're moving around in the ocean. Now I have my standard size card base, some turquoise cardstock, and my card is all done, which I love those guys. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. 
So this is Ocean Wave Borders So Jelly and its coordinating dies. I love these so much. They're so fun for creating cute scenes. The Ocean Wave dies are going to be great for a lot of our other stamp sets too. And I cannot wait to see what you guys create with these. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye! Thank you.